Welcome back to our video series on receivables. This second video will be all about notes receivable. Notes receivable are evidenced by promissory notes written by the maker and given to the payee. As with accounts receivable, short-term notes receivable are initially recorded at face value. Interest-bearing notes receivable are initially measured at face value as well. Only notes receivable that are non-interest-bearing are initially recognized at present value. Subsequently, notes receivable are measured at amortized cost. Accounting for interest-bearing note is quite straightforward. Interest may be either simple or compounded. In accounting problems, we will assume the latter. Compounding simply means that interest earns interest. Say we have a note with a face value of 1 million pesos and earns interest at 12% compounded annually. The interest in the first year is computed as 1 million pesos times 12%, which gives us 120,000 pesos. In the subsequent year, on top of the 1 million pesos, the 120,000 pesos interest will also earn interest. Hence, the interest income in the second year is computed as 1,120,000 pesos times 12%, which is equal to 134,400 pesos, and so on. Let's proceed to accounting for non-interest-bearing note. The term non-interest-bearing is actually a misnomer. No rational person will ever part with his or her money for long without receiving interest in return. For non-interest-bearing notes, the interest is actually already included in the face value. Non-interest-bearing notes receivable are initially recorded at present value. If we remove the interest or the financing component from the face value, we will have the present value. If the problem provides us with a cash price, there is no need to compute for the present value anymore, since the cash price reflects the true price if there had been no financing component. The difference between the face value and the present value is unearned interest income, and recognized as interest income over the term of the note. Say we have a non-interest bearing note of 400,000 pesos, payable in equal installments of 100,000 pesos. The cash price is 350,000 pesos. Take note that the gross income amounting to 70,000 pesos is computed as the difference between the cash price, not the face value, and the cost of the machinery. The difference between the face value of the note and the cash price amounts to 50,000 pesos. This is recognized as unearned interest income and amortized over the term of the note. Here is the schedule of amortization. The fractions are derived from the remaining balance of the note at the beginning of the period. Hence, interest income in 2020 is computed as 50,000 times 4 over 10. The interest income in the second year is computed as 50,000 times 3 over 10, and so on. Amortization of the unearned interest income is recorded as a debit to unearned interest income and a credit to interest income. Most problems, however, do not provide us with a cash price. So instead, we compute for the present value of expected cash flows to approximate the cash price. Some problems also don't readily give us the present value factor. Hence, it is important that we know how to compute for the PV factor using our basic calculator. Here we have the steps to compute for the PV factor for lump sum, ordinary annuity, and annuity due. These steps should be doable in any basic calculator model. Depending on your calculator model, there can be several alternative ways to compute for the PV factor. We have learned about the concept of time value of money in our accounting and finance classes. A good grasp of this concept will help you better understand the effective interest method used in accounting for non-interest bearing notes when no cash price is given. In this problem, we have a note with a face value of 300,000 pesos payable in installments of 100,000 pesos. The prevailing interest rate is 10%. The cash price and the PV factor are not given, so we need to solve for the PV factor and present value of cash flows. Since the note is payable in equal installments, 
we will be using the ordinary annuity formula in computing for the present value. Following the steps presented in the previous slide, we will get the PD factor of an ordinary annuity for three periods at 10%, which is 2.4869. The present value of the note is computed as the periodic installment of 100,000 pesos times the PD factor of 2.4869, which gives us 248,690 pesos. Here we have the amortization table. Observe that at the end of three years, we will have zero present value. This is because we will have received all installments on the note by then. Each year, our present value grows by 10%. So in the first year, the interest income is computed as 248,690 pesos times 10%, which gives us 24,869 pesos. Moreover, each year, we receive an installment of 100,000 pesos which is first applied to interest income, and the remainder is applied to the principal. Thus, our present value decreases by 75,131 pesos at the end of the first year. The subsequent years are computed in the same manner. However, because of rounding off, we are not likely to arrive at precisely zero at the end of three years. So in the last year, the interest income serves as the balancing figure to force the present volume to zero. And here are the journal entries. The difference between the face volume and the present volume of the note amounting to 51,310 pesos is initially recorded as unearned interest income and recognized as interest income over the term of the note based on the amortization table. The amortization is debited to unearned interest income and credited to interest income. The gain on sale amounting to 98,690 pesos is computed as the difference between the sales price and the cost of the asset sold. The sales price is the sum of the down payment and the present value of the note. In this problem, we can also solve for the sales price using the PD factor for annuity due, since the down payment and the periodic installments are equal. Let's have another example. This time, we have a note with a face value of 400,000 pesos, payable in a single sum at the end of three years. The prevailing interest rate for a note of this type is 10%. In this example, we will be using the lump sum formula in computing for the present value. The PV factor of 1 for three periods at 10% is 0 0.7513. The present value of the note is computed as 400,000 times 0 0.7513, which gives us 300,520 pesos. The difference between the face value of 400,000 pesos and the present value of 300,520 pesos is unearned interest income, to be recognized as interest income over the term of the note. The amortization table is as follows. Note that at the end of three years, our present value is equal to our face value of 400,000, which is the amount that we expect to collect on the note. Every year, our present value grows by the effective interest rate of 10%. As in the previous problem, the interest income is computed as the present value times interest rate. The interest income in the last year is simply the balancing figure to force the present value to equal the face value of 400,000 pesos. And here are the journal entries. Once again, the unearned interest income is the difference between the face value and the present value of the note. The unearned interest income is recognized as income over the term of the note. The gain on sale is computed as the difference between the sales price and the carrying amount of the asset sold. The sales price is the sum of the down payment and the present value of the note. And that ends our review lecture on notes receivable. Make sure you have mastered the effective interest method since we will encounter this again in the next topic, loans receivable. As always, please drop your questions and comments in the comment section of my Facebook post. See you in the next video. Bye!